Support Wrestle Talk. Click the thumbs up. There was a huge title change and a new faction formed. A massive WrestleMania 35 match was teased and a whole bunch of pointless cameos. I am Luke Owen. Leave a comment as I'll be replying to as many of them as I can for the first 15 minutes of this video going live and vote in the poll above my head to let me know what you thought of the show. Choosing from Smack Damn, Smack Testing, Smack Bang in the Middle, Elseworthy and a Smack in the Face. This is the 1000th episode of WWE Smackdown in about four minutes. The show opened with a tremendous video package that showed some of the most memorable moments from SmackDown's previous 1,000 episodes, which means they focused mostly on the late 90s and early to mid 2000s. Moments like Rhino goring Chris Jericho through the screen, Vince McMahon winning the WWF Championship, Stephanie McMahon becoming the Women's Champion, Big Boss Man ruining Big Show's dad's funeral, Teddy Long having a heart attack, Teddy Long's face when he was in a car with The Undertaker, Arnold Schwarzenegger, cowboy hats, and my personal favorite, press check on Jackass. We then got the return of Truth TV complete with not one, but two dance breaks. Truth's guest was Stephanie McMahon's awful entrance music, who was quickly interrupted by her brother Shane. Where have you been, Shane? Remarkably, he's still the commissioner of SmackDown Live and welcomed Stephanie to the A Show. This brought down Vincent Kennedy McMahon with one of the best entrance themes ever, who said the crowd didn't want to see Shane and Stephanie bickering. They wanted to see another dance break. And that was it! Cameos. What was much better was the fun tag team match between the Usos taking on WWE Champion and his number one contender Daniel Bryan. Styles and Bryan will of course be having a match at Crown Jewel. Come to Saudi Arabia! <coughs> Wait, what's that? No, no, I, no, I said it was streaming on the WWE Network. Oh look, AJ's having a match! The finish saw AJ and Bryan accidentally collide, leading to the Usos getting the win. AJ and Bryan had an uneasy stare off, showing that their once friendly rivalry might be coming something more heated. A thumbs up segment. Paige was doing nothing backstage when Vicky Guerrero, Teddy Long and Johnny A showed up. Cameos! And the SmackDown celebrations continued when Evolution made their first ever appearance on the show. Yeah, I don't know why this Raw exclusive act were there either. Well, apart from the obvious, but we'll get to that. This was pretty fun though, with Batista and Rick sharing a cute missed fist bump, and then the most natural line of the night when Batista joked about Flair, keep that thing in your pants. A line that got a huge pop from the crowd and made all four of them break character. But really this segment was here to tease a possible WrestleMania match between Batista and Triple H. Big day Dave said that Trips has done everything there is to do in this business except beat him. WrestleMania stare intensifies! Apart from that, cameos. The Miz defeated Rusev in less than 30 seconds after an Aiden English distraction to qualify for the World Cup. Was that? Oh, yeah, no, sorry. What I meant was the World Cup to determine the best in the world. Thanks. Rusev then beat up Aiden English after the match. Oh, and Kurt Angle was on commentary cameos. After another small cameo from Kurt Hawkins with Edge backstage, the best cameo of the evening, Tony Chimmel introduced the Rated R Superstar. Edge for a segment with Becky Lynch and Charlotte Flair. Edge brought out Becky and said that she reminds him a lot of himself. He said that he did the same thing she did. He gave up every friendship and burnt every bridge to get to the top, only to find out it was a lonely place. Acting like he was Luke Skywalker and Becky was Darth Vader, Edge said that he could still see the good person inside Becky Lynch and said that eventually she will not like herself. Becky responded by saying she doesn't like herself. She loves herself. Becky, 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 Becky. She told Edge to get out of her ring when the valiant babyface Charlotte came down to a chorus of boos. They then got into a fight which the refs had to break up. This Becky Lynch heel turn still isn't working and yet the train keeps rolling. We then got a really good Super Showdown rematch between The Bar and The New Day for the SmackDown Tag Team Championships which featured Jerry Lawler and Booker T providing commentary. Cameos. You know, I really would have liked to have seen Michael Cole and Taz do commentary for this match. And I never thought I would want to see Cole do commentary on anything. The bar took off the top of New Day's pancake commentary table when Big Show made his way down to the ring. While it looked like he was there to save New Day, he made his 1000th turn on this 1000th episode of SmackDown and choke slammed Kofi Kingston through the table. Sheamus hit the bro kick on Big E and the bar are your new tag team champions who celebrated in the ring with Big Show like they're a brand new faction. 
Okay then. We then got a pre-tape promo and cameo from John Cena's hair, which by the lightning behind him was likely done at Super Showdown. And then we got our final entrant into the World Cup to determine the best in the world when Rey Mysterio pinned Shinsuke Nakamura in a pretty sloppy match. These two never felt like they were on the same page, but it was fun to see Rey back in a WWE ring. He hit the 619 and dropped the dime for the win and was immediately cut off by The Undertaker's dong. He made his slow way down to the ring and then cut perhaps the shortest promo in SmackDown history. He literally said that DX will rest in peace, and then he left. The entrance was longer than the promo. Cameo. Unlike a lot of nostalgia shows done by WWE, SmackDown 1000 tried to further its own storylines, which it did with AJ and Brian, and to some extent Becky and Charlotte. We did get new tag team champions and an intriguing new faction, as well as that Batista and Triple H mania tease, but the show never really felt like the celebration of SmackDown it was supposed to be. Where was The Rock, John Cena, JBL, and Eddie Guerrero video package? Where was Taz on commentary? Plus, we didn't get an appearance from the advertised Tory Wilson, so this should really get a smack in the face. It tried to be both in a sound show and an episode of SmackDown, but it didn't really master both. It was fine, I guess. SmackDown 1000 was a high smack bang in the middle, or a low smacktastic. It was better than Raw 25. Check out Ollie Davis and myself review Monday Night Raw in the Wrestle Ramble, which you can watch by clicking the video on screen right now. I've been Luke Cohen, and that was wrestling.